What's up everybody? So I've had it's quite a fun weekend. I've been uh, really deep in code trying to create something like an Excel, Excel, Excel style um, user interface, like a big spreadsheet. And as you can imagine, spreadsheets sometimes have loads of data and you need to somehow show that in a really fast way. Um, this led me to look at things like infinite scroll and virtual scroll and and um, I've spent some time on virtual scroll and I figured let's just make a video about it. For those of you who don't know what it is, why it's needed, you'll learn that today. Um, for those of you who kind of used it and who wonder how it works under the hood, you'll also learn that today. Um, yeah, so let's let's just talk about it. In fact, let's, I, let's talk too much. Let's just look at some code. Um, so if you'll come with me to the laptop, we have a blank page um, that's a Next.js app. And this is one of the pages in the app. So if I, um, you know, just kind of do a h1, um, hello, and save, go to localhost slash YouTube, my page name. I should see it, great. And I can also do something like, you know, um, good, yeah, we have a live, live reload. Um, and everything should be fine, I think. Take the hint, <laughs> anyway. Um, so virtual scrolling, why do we need it? Let's illustrate that by breaking a bunch of stuff. Um, let's create a table, right? T head, uh, T head exactly, and T R T H. So we have a header. Actually, let's skip the header. Um, we're just doing a hardcore data table this time. T D. Okay. Um, and I want the table's border to collapse. So border collapse, collapse. And I want the T Ds to have some cool style. So we'll say padding eight, border one pixel solid. C C C. Anything else? I think that's fine. Um, lastly, we need to iterate over the data. So we have data dot map and we have a row. Um, we'll just close that bracket and we'll map in the row. And we have some columns or just a column. Um, the key of this is the row is the first row cell, the first cell in the row. And the key of this is the column itself. Um, we'll also have the column be a child. It's telling me it doesn't know what data is, so I'm gonna import it. Data from data. Now it does. Um, this is good. And so if you're wondering what data is, it's an array from 250,000 elements. Um, the first cell is the number of the, 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 the row, and then it's just a bunch of random stuff. So let's save this and uh, go reload the page. A moment of silence for the dead browser, please. <laughs> it's like, okay, it killed the browser. The page is asking me if I want to kill it. I do. Um, page euthanasia, um, not not good. So how can we fix this? To start with, let's load that data set into state. Actually, let's not do that. But let's just do data dot. Let's just call it a const. Const visible data data dot slice zero and limit. But what's the limit? I don't know, let's do 20. Okay, something like that. So we don't, you know, screw around and we'll use visible data everywhere instead. Is that better? Okay, we have 20 rows. Cool. But I'm not seeing the 250,000. Moreover, I want to be able to scroll here, not the whole page, just my little window of my table. So what we'll do is we'll add a little div here. Um, we'll give that div a finite height. Uh, with uh, let's say 500 overflow is auto so it can scroll um, How's that looking? Sorry, I meant height my bad Yeah, that's that's all right So we have a scrollable thingamajigger, but we can only show 20 if we show 250,000 things break We need a smart way to show 250,000 this is right. This is why this is why we need virtual scrolling. What virtual scrolling does is it allows you to show just a specific number of nodes in your browser. Um, and when the user scroll, as the user scrolls, you replace the same 20 nodes with different values um, based on the index, based on the scroll position, basically. Um, so if a user scrolls like 20 lines, then you show them stuff from the 20th line. You show them 20 things actually from the 20th line. That's essentially it. So you have just a few things in your browser, but it's always ideally what the user wants to see. Uh, let's look at how we implement that. To implement that, we need to know a few things. We need to know the height of our little window, this 500 pixel div we just made. We need to know the height of each table row. Um, that is, let's take a look. 
that is each table row is like 35, let's just say 36 pixels. Um, and we need to know how far the user has scrolled. So we need to compute this stuff as the user scrolls. So to, to do this, what we need to know really is the scroll position. We need to keep that in state. So if we go here and do const scroll top, set scroll top, use state. We'll start with zero, zero package. Um, and we'll say to this thing, on scroll, um, we'll say set scroll top to be e dot target dot current target dot scroll top. That is the current targets, the current events targets scroll top. Um, and we we might add a little heading here just to make sure we're not insane and we're getting the right data. We'll say you've scrolled scroll top pixels. Does that work as we scroll? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, so we know the scroll position. We know the height of the container. We can set the height of the rows. Let's do that. Const row height is 36, and we'll set that on each tr. Uh, style height is row height. Okay, nice. So we kind of know everything. Um, so now what we got to do is, based on the scroll position, compute what is the first row that should be visible, and then just add um, like 20 after that, right? And, and just keep keep that going as, as long as the page is. How can we do that? Well, um, we need to, when the user scrolls past an element, then we need to set the scroll top to the scroll top, the scroll top in our state, by the way, not the element scroll top. So we need to set our, our internal React state scroll top position to the scroll top plus the row height because they've passed a row, right? So we'll, we'll do that. We'll say set scroll top, not just to the scroll top because that's kind of redundant, to uh, scroll top plus row height. So now um, we have scrolled zero pixels, but as we scroll, this is plus the row height, still changing. Um, in fact, we want to do for the first row, it should be zero. So scroll top plus row height minus row height. So in the beginning it's zero and it's always zero at the top, but when you scroll, it doesn't account for the first row. Um, which is, this is this is awesome, this is what we want, okay. So this is great, um, but nothing's happening on scroll. We need to swap out that first node with what is expected to be the first node. How do we do that? How do we identify the first node? Well, if we look on the screen here, now that I've scrolled 221 pixels down, um, in this part here where my cursor is, like this huge chunk over the window, um, that stuff, actually, maybe I can, here, be background, is red and then if we, if we do our container background is white so now the scroll top is somewhere in this red stuff here right um, if we divide that 221 pixels by the row height we should we should theoretically know the next row that is going to be visible let's try that so 221 divided by the row height of 36 six point something and if we say math dot floor We'll just get uh, six. So we've we've scrolled past six things. The first row is going to be the seventh. And as we can see here, it is. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's do that. Let's swap out, based on the scroll position, swap out the first one and then set the subset of the array to be first and then end at first plus 20. That the key first plus 20, the position first plus 20. So let's do that. So um, what we're gonna do is, Visible data is no longer zero and limit, but it's um, scroll top, scroll top, divided by row height, maybe you round that a bit, math.floor, uh, divided by, and the limit is, let's just actually change, get the, let's call this const start node. So we'll go from start node to start node plus limit in the collection. So if it, it's first zero from 20, what if the start node is one, then it's one to 21, 10 to 31, 10 to 30, and so on. Let's, does that work? Let's take a look. Ooh, we're getting some jitters. Um, maybe we do math.seal instead of floor. Okay, that's much nicer. It's still a bit jittery, but generally it seems to be working. Let's take a look at the 
what's happening here. So we have the first TR is one and there's 20 of them. What happens when we scroll? Yeah, you can see that we're swapping out table rows. So the first TR is now eight and not one. Um, and and so yeah, we're, this, this is kind of working. It's still, I mean, it's very rudimentary, but we do have some virtual scrolling. <clears throat> one problem is we have this huge amount of jank because our scroll area, look at the scroll bar, it's, it's too long. We're trying to render 250,000 rows here and provide a natural scrolling experience. So that scroll bar needs to be really small. How can we do that? We can do that by adding some, some ghost table rows. Um, I call it the sandwich technique, right? So we have a, a table row above the first one with a height zero and a table row at the very bottom with a height that is row height times the number of total rows. So that is row height 36 times 250,000, probably 9 million. Um, we have that. And then as you scroll, the top gets higher and the bottom gets smaller. Meanwhile, in the middle, um, everything just stays. No, it's a bit hard to conceptualize. That's why we're going to just write code here. So uh, let's try that. Let's add ghost rows. We'll do first one here, TR. Uh, and then one just before the ending. It needs to have an opening tag too. And yeah, we'll just say height. So class name height is row height. And we'll say this is the start row height. This is the end row height. Of course, we need to com compute these, and it's not class name, it's style, my bad. We need to compute these. So um, const start row height is the height of the starting row. It's initially zero, but it changes based on when we scroll. Um, so that is just the scroll top, I think. I th is it more? I think, let's, it's scroll top plus row height, actually. Um, and then we have the end row height, end row height, which is the overall height. So it's data dot length times row height. Okay, what do we have? So we have the top one, we have the bottom one, which is 9 million as I expected. And as we scroll, look at that. It's not janky, it's relatively smooth. Um, so. It's, it's work, and as you can see what's happening here, the top one is growing. Um, but also because of this massive 9 million pixel ending thing, um, the scroll bar is tiny and it allows us to really scroll quite a bit um, and, and render the actual 250 something columns, but it's still a bit buggy. So let's, let's control ourselves. This needs to decrement every time. So it's the, it's the total height minus the top, the um, the starting row height. So, because they need to together uh, form the entire row height, right? To represent. So now, if you look at our scroll area, it actually fully represents a two hundred fifty thousand um, row set. And as we scroll, the top gets higher, the bottom gets lower, and we can comfortably mosey on um, into our into our two hundred and fifty k. Um, it does disappear sometimes because we're literally mutating the DOM here, but we can, yeah, here we go. So we are, let's not scroll past it, but yeah, we're somewhere there. 250,000. And that's essentially virtual scrolling in a very, very like amateur way. But I wanted you to get the, there we go, 250K. Um, and in this case, you can see the bottom now is just 415 pixels tall. The top is some huge number. Um, and I actually quite like this because, you know, I, I kind of don't want to go back to that zero first row as well. Maybe 72 is a bit much, but why is it even 72? Um, yeah, there's definitely things I can do here to improve this. Is that even necessary? Oh, I guess it wasn't. Okay. Um, yeah, this, this is kind of exactly what we want, isn't it? At the top, it's, uh, yeah, perfect. So virtual scrolling, that's that's it. Now, this works up to 250K rows, as we can see, um, somewhere here, but can we do, by the way, um, I, there's a bug here where like, if you scroll 
the scroll bar kind of just gets carried away and it auto scrolls on like autopilot. I don't know why. Um, that's why I'm kind of grabbing it occasionally. But okay, so we have somewhere 250k and it's still performant and so on. There's some layout shift. It can be fine tuned for sure. Um, for example, I don't even think these borders are collapsing, but um, yeah, it's performant. That's, that's what I want to say. So now it's 250k, it looks okay. Can we do a million? This is the weirdest bug I've found recently. For some reason, I think it's because the browsers limit like how scrollable an element can be. We just never get to a million. Like at the most, we'll get to like 400,000 or something. All right. Anyway, that's weird. Like let's, let's, look, let's try and do a million, why not? So one, one, two, three, one, two, three, six zeros, save, reload. So we still have the virtualized scrolling. It's fast, it's performant, even though we have a million rows. And if we go all the way to the bottom here, we just get 466033. Not a million, 466033. And I thought, oh, am I doing something wrong? Uh, turns out it's just like in every library, um, it's just, that's how it is. So React, this is React table um, in Code Sandbox. We can open in Code Sandbox and oh dear, bad credentials. Okay, can we edit it here? Um, where's the, how do they get data? Ah, here, make data. That's 100K, I think. Let's just add one there. Does it update? I think it does. Can I scroll to the bottom? Oh dear. Okay, well, that crashed even before. Okay, here. So if we scroll to the bottom, 479348. Not a million. Um, what about reactive? Yeah, dev extreme. This one. Look at this. This is an awesome thing. I love this one. Um, this is great. Sure. Um, but if we open this also in Code Sandbox and edit it and add a million rows, um, it just doesn't seem to work. It's kind of nuts that anything t with a native table just doesn't want to doesn't want to work. So, okay, I've got a million rows here, um, but they have they've oh dear, they've uh, is this what did I do something wrong? I just changed. Okay, this is fine. So if we like expand all of the collapsed things, there should be a million rows. And again, if we try to scroll all the way to the bottom, um, we can't even do it with a keyboard. Can we? Whoa. Okay, let's just grab this here. Go all the way to the bottom. You'll notice it's not actually the bottom because Asia is kind of just cut there. So with native table elements, <clears throat> we just can't. We just literally, that this is, I, for some reason, seems to be a hard limit in the browser. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what do we do then? What's the next alternative? The next alternative is to use divs and do your table layout kind of as a as a grid, as a data grid. Um, a great example of this here, let's look at AG grid infinite scroll um, or is it virtual scroll. Let's just look at AG grid just straight up. This is my favorite. They, they do a really good job, I have to say, and this is probably what I'll use instead of rolling my own. Um, so this is AG grid and if we go to the demo, think well, maybe not the demo but if we make, let's see get started with react tutorial and um yeah let's so let's um so let's just set this here to be an array from length one million um and the object is make We'll just put the the number of the index there. Um, model is math dot random, and price is math dot random. Okay. Um, save, and now if it renders, what we'll see is actually AG Grid tends to be the best. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, a million just comfortably, and if we inspect the element. Um, it's just all divs. They don't use native tables. And I think that's why I think with tables, you can't go very far. Um, but hopefully that's been, I hope you enjoyed kind of this deep dive and understanding how virtualization works and how virtual scrolling can help and some of the limitations you have with tables. Uh, what thoughts do you have? What comments, questions, praise? Um, as usual, leave them in the comments or at me on Twitter. For now, that's been it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.